Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into tonight's film session. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Georgia's newest transfer tight end, Trey McKitty. Uh, stands at about 6'5", 245-ish pounds. A uh, dynamic athlete, and we're going to break down all of what he'll be able to bring to the table uh, for the University of Georgia. But before we do that, uh, all the business stuff, if you would, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a good thumbs up. And if you don't mind, man, share this video wherever uh, you want to take it, man. If you like it, uh, share it for me. Uh, but before we get into that, um, or before we move forward, I uh, got to tell you also to follow us over on Twitter at Brooks Austin uh, SI. That's Brooks Austin SI. Uh, I'll probably put it on the screen for you. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be taking a look at Trey McKitty tonight. Sorry if I seem a little tired. It's a little late. Uh, but nonetheless, no excuses. Uh, we're going to get better tonight uh, and get better together. But anyways, these first couple of clips, it doesn't take long. We're going to take a look at him against uh, North Carolina State. Uh, shout out to whoever made these cut-ups on YouTube. We appreciate you. But the great thing about Trey McKitty, uh, what he's going to be be able to bring to the table, is a guy who can do absolutely everything. Right now you're going to see him down here at the bottom of your screen split out as a primary wide receiver. He's just going to run a little five-yard hitch right here and just create space and catch the ball on the sideline and get out of bounds. Okay? So very first clip, Justin Blackman throws it a little bit behind him. All good. We adjust to the football. And we get a little five-yard, you know, a little easy reception right here. And then the very next snap, you're going to see him do what he's going to get asked to do a lot at the University of Georgia. And you're going to see him now in this little sniffer position, right? We've seen uh, Charlie Wolf and e – or excuse me, yeah, Charlie Wolf. Charlie Warner and Eli Wolf play this. Again, we call this the sniffer position, or at least I do, because his nose, his alignment, is at the butt of the tackle, right? He's sniffing the butt, right? We call that a sniffer position. Uh, but nonetheless, you're going to see he's in a blocking role here. He's ISO'd with the defensive lineman, uh, the defensive end right there. They're running what we call skate protection. Everybody working to the right on a flat line. We're going to get the end man on the line of scrimmage with the tight end. So, Trey, that's your job. You're locked on to this guy the rest of the uh, snap. And these guys are all on skate protection. We're skating to the right. If you ever hear a quarterback on Sundays uh, when the nice field mics are turned up loud, if you ever hear someone yell, Ringo, Ringo, or Lucky, Lucky, right? Uh, it's first syllable, Ringo, right, Lucky, left. This would be a skate right or a Ringo call with Trey McKitty picking up the end man on the line of scrimmage. Great job here by Trey, and he's going to finish through the snap, okay? Something he'll get asked to do at Georgia. Also, what he'll get asked to do at Georgia is play in the slot. you got to be a tight end at Georgia. They run a lot of 12 personnel. Eli Wolf did most of this uh, from the tight ends group this season. Charlie Warner, uh, more of your blocking tight end. Eli Wolf, a little bit more of a receiving weapon. But nonetheless, Trey McKitty, more of a weapon than the both of them. Uh, and you're going to see him win within the slot right here as well. Pretty sure this ball's intended for him. Yep, you're going to see him just get, you know, come in here, find the void of the defense. They're playing zone coverage. So once you get open, settle it down, get your eyes on the quarterback, make yourself a big target, and catch the football, and, you know, get out. But uh, nonetheless, the guy can do – I think I've been talking to myself the whole time. The guy can do all of it. Nope, we're good. We've been recording. Um, but the guy can do all of it, and we're going to take a look at some more here in just a second. All right, here's Trey at the top of the screen. This is actually Trey formation. Call this Trey Wright. Trey speaking to the tight end and the three receivers down at the bottom. So what they're trying to do here is they're just trying to run sprint action out here with Justin Blackman trying to roll out, which means Trey is responsible for sealing this edge, getting to the outside shoulder of this defensive end in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Do not let this guy cross your face. Uh, same job here for the right tackle. Unfortunately, he doesn't quite get his job done, but Trey does. Take a look at number six right here. He does a phenomenal job first of just getting hands-on right now. And now at this point, offensive linemen and tight ends, look at the mess right here, first of all. Everybody turned the wrong direction. We're trying to run sprint action this way. So if your shoulders and face is facing this sideline as an offensive lineman who's supposed to be capturing this edge, You've already lost. But Trey hasn't lost. He's got his hands on this ACC defensive end. And at this point, he's going to fight this play side hip, this right hip, and keep it driving upfield like we showed you with Tate Ratledge uh, in the Army All-American game. you got to throw that play side hip up forward. You see him working it and just keeping his feet wide. This is what you love about Trey right here. 
This is a guy, look how wide his feet are. This is a guy who's played college football and dominated, or not necessarily dominated, but he's played a physical style of attack. Look, all these guys got the same responsibilities. All, all six of these guys have the same responsibility. Take your outside zone footwork and reach the gap next to you. Okay, we're trying to capture the edge. Do not let any defender cross your face. And what does the right tackle do? Right off the snap. Watch this guy right here. Lost. Lost. This defensive tackle is now across his face and has recognized sprint action. And look who gets back there and rushes the quarterback and makes the play. But nonetheless, there's one guy out here doing his job. And this is good stuff to see from number six because you know he's going to be called upon to do it because I don't think Darnell Washington is going to be quite ready uh, mechanics-wise. He's definitely a hell, hell of a lot strong enough, uh, you know, plenty strong enough to do it at the SEC level. Uh, but the technique's not quite there. But this is tremendous technique. Look, we're in good pad level. We're not leaning too far over our toes. You know, he, we could get snatched down here, but we probably won't. And again, good, wide, strong base from the three-year tight end. All right, here we got him as a lead blocker on what we call halfback lead counter here. Uh, left tackle right here is going to get inside leverage on, on this defensive end, force him up the field that way. These guys are going to seal this nose, blo nose tackle off, or at least try to here in the middle. And Trey is responsible for inserting into B-gap. That's what we call a lead counter. Inserting into B-gap for this first, outside, first inside linebacker uh, past the center. Okay, that's who he's pulling for. That's who his eyes are on. Uh, I would venture to say this play, I know it's in the playbook for Georgia. I've seen him run lead counter a lot. Um, but I would venture to say next year, you may even see quarterback lead counter where they fake outside zone here to really force this defensive end to go upfield and really open up B gap right there and then insert uh, Trey McKitty or Darnell Washington into B gap right here and then just run quarterback lead counter. It's one of the most uh, you know coveted plays in spread option football uh, at this point in time. But here you're going to see Trey do a very good job of sorting through the garbage is what we call that. Sorting through the trash, being patient, you know, chopping his feet down and finding his guy and attacking it with, you know, authority. Now, there are some things we could correct here, um, but nonetheless, I keep saying nonetheless tonight, guys, and I apologize for that. Um, but he gets up to number seven right here and gets his paws on him and gets a good block, allows Cam Akers, I believe that is, uh, to get down the field for a big gain. Again, I think you, you know that you know you're going to see this play from Georgia. Uh, it's just a matter of who's going to be running and how they're going to be running. Like I said, I think you might see a lot of how about this being James Cook, and you know we'll run a couple of outside zone stretches this way, and then we'll slip the quarterback counter in here with Trey McKitty as a lead blocker and Jamie Newman sticking it up here in the hole at six four, two hundred thirty pounds. I'm going to tell you what. That's going to be pretty scary, even for SEC defenses. Now, they're playing UL Monroe right there, so it ain't that much. Um, but again, this is also what he can do. We've shown you this a bunch of times tonight. Just find the hole in the zone, snap your head around, catch a ball in traffic, uh, protect the football, and get to the ground. Um, he's doing the same thing in the very next clip. So you know he's going to be able to do this, snap his head around, find the football, and catch it with sure hands. Uh, and you know he can do this stuff too. Get in the open, and look, he's never – look at him set this corner up down here. They're trying to show a little – we called this Fox the other day, right? Show a little screen action and then get behind these guys that might suck up on the screen the other day. We saw that from Wake Forest. Um, Jamie Newman ended up throwing a pick against Clemson. But check out uh, check out Trey right here. Force or attack the outside shoulder of this corner to get him to open his hips up this way. Stick his outside foot in the ground and then work to the void right here in the middle of the field. Now, six is running zone here, um, but he is he's clueless as to what uh, Trey is doing there. And again, good contact balance and finishing the runoff hard right there is number six. He plays with a lot of effort, and that's what it's going to require. Here he is. Look at that. Look at him on the back side right here. This this play is created by number six right here. They're running, you know, pretending to run inside zone this way and, and the back slipping this way. Um, but watch the drive right here on this cutoff block. That's just good stuff uh, from number six. It's been a lot of complaints over the last couple of years about Georgia not being able to attack the middle of the defense. 
or it seems like Jake Fromm always had to do the back shoulder fades down here or the deep shot one-on-one. -on -one. Well, when you got a guy that's explosive like this that you're going to see him run for the first time here, really, what he's going to do is he's going to press this safety as hard as he can and then snap it off real hard and run a little slot post right here uh, on first and 10 against North Carolina State. So you see guys are bailing already. This safety's got this middle of the field. This safety's playing hash to boundary over here. This guy appears to be in man-to-man. -man. All the linebackers got zone drops, so they're going to drop to the sticks. This guy's supposed to reroute number two. He's not quite doing his job. When we say reroute, that means this guy's got to get hands on number two and drive him off of the seam, right? Drive him off of this vertical path, make him go wide. So if he is going to get back into the field, uh, into the middle of the field, it's going to take longer. But all these guys are going to get into their drop. Trey's going to outrun their drop, okay? He's going to get to the sticks right here and break this post route off before these guys can even get close to their drop. Blackman's going to do a good job here of dropping this ball in over the zone. So take a look right here. Boom. Look at the space created because this guy can really, really run routes. Um, and he's quick and explosive, right? He's not just a 250-pound load. He's a guy that can move uh, and, and play in the slot and win in the slot. Look how much space is created. Another thing you got to take a look at, look at him high point in this football. Okay, he's going up and picking this thing down. And watch the immediate transfer, and he's off. Okay, now he gets tackled and hit from the low, and the contact balance isn't quite there. Okay, he doesn't exactly run through that. But you can see how much of a fluid athlete he is. As soon as he gets the ball in his hands, he's tucked down and ready to go. Um, you know, this is a, let's call it a 30, 35-yard gain, and he pushes on that safety really, really fast. And matter of fact, I think if I can get it for you, watch the the movement here. Watch the uh, route running at the top of this. Watch him stick his foot in the ground real hard. Yep, you can almost see it as he dips out of your screen. Let's see here. It's going to be hard for you to see it. Right here, he's going to stick that outside foot in the ground, give a hard head nod like he's going to run the corner route this way, but he's actually snapping it off and running the post this way. Okay, some good route running from a big man uh, who can pick the ball down and run with it as well. All right, one dead giveaway for an offensive coaching staff thinking that, you know, you're a weapon with the ball in your hands. Uh, is whether or not they design easy screen plays for you, right? Plays where, you know, we can just get you the ball and hopefully into open space. Uh, this is early in the game, you know, start of the second quarter. You know, could have done a better job with the delay here. But what you're going to see is this is Syracuse now. This ain't no FCS opponent. Uh, Trey McKitty's about to have the speed uh, and the agility to reverse field on a Division One set of athletes. Stiff arms one guy, makes another guy miss. And now we're off to the races on the outside. Uh, just, you know, dead giveaways of an explosive athlete. There's that NC State play we showed you earlier. Look, again, could have faked it better. But once we got the rock in our hands, he almost looks like a tailback, right? Um, and, and we showed you what he can already do in the run game in terms of blocking and dominating there. But this is the type of fluid, freakish athlete that you're getting uh, when you get number six on your roster. Just something to look at. Again, you want a sign that coach believes in you with the ball in your hands. How about this one? Third and 14. And this is a neat little play design here from this FSU coaching staff. How about this screen to Trey McKitty right here? Getting a guy in open space on third and 14. And you know, he, he looked a little hesitant at the back end of this run. But, again, you see the type of athlete he is and what kind of runner he is with the football. Um, we could probably, the pass set could be a little bit better. See how, watch when the first thing happens is butt sinks. Okay, that's a guy who hadn't kick set a lot. Uh, but nonetheless, he gets the ball, um, and he's pretty special when he's got it in his hands. Here's a little wide cut of it. Cameraman could have done a little bit of a better job, but you see the guy running. He can move in open space. Uh, that's him speaking of open space. That's him finding it. But look at this, man. This is special. When a guy can do this kind of stuff, you know, sit in a zone and then on third and six, look, he catches this ball right at the sticks, right? And then he makes linebacker miss, runs around him, and then gets into a, an extra 15 yards because of how much of an athlete he is. And here we go. How about a look at Clemson? Okay, a little shovel pass on second and six. And look at the short area quickness here. Watch these two steps. Wah -wah! And then he gets up to top speed pretty quickly, and Isaiah Simmons runs him down. A shovel pass again, and there you see the physicality. 
what kind of big man this is on third and four. You can't be a me guy if you're going to play a skill position at Georgia, um, and you got to be able to put this kind of stuff on tape if you're going to get on the field. You got to block for other guys. You got to make plays for your teammates, and you got to play with phenomenal effort. And that's all that is right there from Trey McKitty. Uh, it's just good stuff from number six. And, you know, you got an undersized guy on you, right? We get out in space against a corner here. This guy is saying, oh, crap, right? Look, we're in a defenseless, defenseless position almost right here. But look at Trey. Trey doesn't do, you know, doesn't lean on him. He doesn't get his head involved in the block. No, he knows he's big enough and strong enough. He's going to get hands on. He's going to keep a good wide base, and he's going to stay with outside leverage and run his feet through the block and finish on the on the top side of the block. That's good stuff from number six right there. All right, I was asked several times on social media to explain what the hell happened here. Uh, apparently, this is a you know a, a rush to the lines type of situation. You see, they're in split pistol here with two backs in the formation. Um, you know, according to Trey in his interviews, this is something that the Florida State coaching staff asked him to do. But what you're going to see as the clip rolls, they're just trying to confuse the defense. And you can see he's pretty unentertained with what's going on here. And then you'll see him quick run to motion and set up on the line of scrimmage over here. And they're in trips bunch over here. I would imagine, you know, this is some type of freeze play. They're trying to do something to confuse the defense. Obviously, it didn't work very well, right? This guy is completely, uh, you know, uninterested in whatever the heck Six is doing over here. And then they're going to run, like I said, into Trips Bunch with a tight end to the boundary. Um, I have no idea what's going on here. I've never seen anything like it. Hey, but every once in a while, stupid things happen, um, and, and coaches put goofy things in. Um, but it wasn't Trey, right? You think when, when you see this kind of stuff, you think, what the heck? This guy must have got hit pretty daggum hard last play. Uh, no, this is this is the coach getting hit a little too hard. And I, I'm with you, Trey. The the body language tells me you think this is stupid. Um, I don't think it's necessarily too smart either. Um, so I'm with you there. But that's why. This isn't six messing this up. Matter of fact, when you see a guy that's playing tight end like this, plays outside in the wide receiver position, plays in the slot, plays in that sniffer position, you're talking about a guy who knows the playbook inside and out. Okay, this guy – does not blow assignments. They can trust this guy to play any position on the field, and they asked him to do so in the three seasons that he was there. So without knowing Trey, with having, having never had a conversation with Trey McKitty, I can tell you right now, he's an extremely, extremely smart football player. And if you don't think so, ask any wide receiver that's ever been asked to play X, Y, and Z, and then play a little bit of fullback as well. This is a guy uh, who is smart and can pick up a playbook rather rather quickly um so that's where we're going to end it tonight and again man i'm with you on the body language i'm i'm done with this play as well um but nonetheless thank you guys for tuning in to tonight's film session you know we do these things multiple times a week at this point uh stayed up a little later for this one uh but we had to get to trey mckitty we promised you over on the twitter account over at brooks austin si uh and you know we'll have an article paired with this as well so you know like we told you at the very beginning of the show or the very beginning of the session, hit that like button or hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and, you know, share it to your friends, man. If you guys want to learn a little bit of football, we taught you skate protection tonight. How about that? Um, and we learned a lot about Trey McKitty, uh, and we'll learn a lot about some more football in the near future. So we appreciate you guys for tuning in. We will catch you next time. Uh, don't be afraid to run on over to Sports Illustrated's Bulldog Maven and support all of our fine print work that we're doing over there. Um, we appreciate you guys. We will see you next time.